Good, good evening, morning, or afternoon, everyone uh, who is listening to today's um, discussion. And then um, it's a very important discussion, a continuation of what we had last week. And we base this on what we have in um, First John chapter 4. In First John chapter 4, verse 1, that says that, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. And, uh, well, we read this in full last week, but we want to pause here for a while and talk about this. What this place is saying is that the first approach we have uh, for whoever is giving any message, whoever is saying anything, who says that he represents God, or he has something to say as uh, pertaining to spiritual things, worship, uh, holiness, Christianity, whatever uh, is close to what we have as Christians. We should first of all come with a kind of easy from God. That should be the first question, not just say, yes, sir. Yes, sir, just because I don't have an idea of what he's saying, just because I do not share in his mystery, or I wasn't there when he, he was in the, in the so-called spirit or spiritual realm. So he says that we should always test. We should test them to be sure that they are not false prophets. So we will have a video uh, soon enough, and we will analyze it, compare it with the scriptures, to see whether or not these people are from God. Okay, please and please, we are not looking for uh, traffic. We are not uh, desperate or maybe we want to be paid. We are looking for money. No, not at all. And we are not in any personal attack against this person in question. What we are after is the truth. And if anybody claims to be a child of God and does not uh, bring the truth, the Bible expects us, the Bible says that we should have a righteous judgment. We should check them, we should test them, and that's what we are doing today. It has nothing to do with his personality. We don't know uh, uh, his bedroom. We don't know what he does in the secret. But what he's bringing to the open is big enough to question. And that's what we are doing today. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. So, yes, we, before we go into the video, uh, we should know that first teachers, first prophets, they love mysteries. They love deep things. They love when they look, uh, they look so intelligent. They look as if they are so big and um, nobody can reach them. Nobody has enough of uh, them. And that is what these people are after. They are after mysteries. They just want it. Well, um, we will be looking at his saying and we'll compare it to the, uh, with the scripture. Uh, over to you, sir. All of the songs you have heard the Lord give me, they were things I caught in worship that I had this. to go and study after. Uh -huh. I picked these things and then I went to study it. <laughs> you didn't get that. Channels of my spirit. Open up. It's not out of study. It's out of worship. I picked it in worship. And then went to study it. So mysteries are available for you. Because I, I understand I'm coming to First John 5. That there are three things that bear witness. The water, the blood and the spirit. So whatever the spirit has revealed to me in worship, it must bear witness in the word. What? So there are mysteries waiting for you in the place of genuine worship. That if you catch, it can change your life forever. There are things that he caught not from the word of God, but from worship. Well, um, today is not about worship. Actually, that's not worship. The way he does his worship is romancing a spirit that he claimed to be Jesus Christ. It is not a spiritual worship, but that's a discussion for another time. Okay, so whatever he caught from that worship, he went to study it. He has something already. So he's looking for things, facts from the Bible 
that can be twisted to suit whatever idea is bringing. So you, is in CGS is bringing things into the script, and that's what uh, he called worship. So uh, I will before we uh, before I say more. I would like us to comment on this. Test mm. this by the word of God. Uh, actually, um, uh, the the young man uh, Oyeka. Um, first and foremost, uh, it, it should be pitied. That's the very first thing. Uh, is somebody to be pitied very, very deeply. Uh, one should wait for him. Uh, because, uh, because of the level of deception that he had, been, that he had fallen into. Uh, he's actually putting the cart before the horse. He made a he made he made a statement that he does not know the implication of the statement that he had just made. If if we are talking of law, it's the most incriminating statement a human being can make. That it is not out of study. It is not out of study it means that he, he was not he was not it wasn't that he was looking inside this book. It, it wasn't that the idea came from his looking inside this book. He was not studying this book. He was not studying this book to see what it contains. He was not studying it to, 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 to understand the mind of the author of this book. That is what that is what that that statement means. It's not that of study. This was somebody who is saying that the idea came to him not out of study of this book, not because he opened this book and he was reading it. Jeremiah chapter thirty-three, and the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah and so so and so. No. He was not reading it in Psalm. This is the mind of God. He was not reading it anywhere in the Bible. He, he was possibly crooning to himself. He was murmuring things which he called worship. Because the man, the young man, Whenever he gets this video, and my prayer is that he will get he will get this video, and the people who are following him will get this video, and they will get what we are saying. That is is I pity him because he is deceived. He is deceived by some spirits. But he does not. He does not know. The issue is that because he does not know God, I, I don't know. I, I've forgotten his first name. I just remember his something. Oyeka. Do you see? Do you see? So do you see? Because do you see? does not know God. Does not know the Lord Jesus Christ. So, therefore, he does not know things that come from the mind of God. He has made a statement, Dunsi has made a statement that to ring more than bell of a lamb to anybody who, who knows any little thing about the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is that it's it, it not, not out of study. That, that's what that means. It's not out of study. It's worse than... If, if you hear that, if you hear that, and you think you have not had something serious, what that means is that this person has said something to you that is worse than somebody telling you, look, you want to drink some tea, do you? Okay. 
I have some cyanide in my hand. I'm just going to sprinkle a little of it into your cup. You are going to enjoy your tea. And you say, okay, well, I, I like tea with cyanide in it. Uh, I, I know I know our scientists will tell you, you are not going to drink Canada tea again. And more likely than not, I'm not even going to finish that tea. But because because the cyanide that those in is 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 distributing is not the type of cyanide that kills immediately, even though the effect of this cyanide is far more long lasting, it's eternal. It will come out and it, and it thinks it, it thinks he's worshiping God. The young man thinks he's worshiping God. It thinks anybody can worship God that way. It thinks God is appearing, is, a, is the person that is sending messages to his head. He does not know that the, the God of the Bible does not send such messages. It is the devil himself that is sending messages to your head. Anybody, anybody that is a Christian gets his ideas from this book directly. First and foremost, yeah, that, is, that is where you get your ideas from. It, so your, your, ideas, your, your ideas come from the study of this book. Your ideas come from the study of this book. So if anybody comes out and I say, well, um, uh, you, you know, this, uh, this uh, clinical of my, something of my spirit, um, whatever, you know, you know it's, not, it's not from the study of the, of the Bible. If you are old, if you are too old to do 100 meters, whatever, whatever number of meters you can do, you sh a, a, a godly person, somebody who knows the Lord Jesus Christ, will pick up everything and leave immediately. Because that is actually the statement that is not from the owner of this book. It's as much. Let me, there are quite a few other things. There are, there are terrible, terrible things, terrible statements. You see, the statements are, are, they are so few, but they are very, very terrible. But let me, let me leave it at that for now. Uh, all right, sir. Um, just a minute. Sir. Can I? Just a minute, sir. Um, thank you very much. Uh, sir, you said, you said that um, what he said is not from this book it's not from the bible so um but he quoted the bible he quoted first john chapter 5 verse 8 yeah. there are three that bears witness let us let us uh, uh, uh john let us solve the first problem of his statement let's leave no, that no, I'm, just, I'm just i'm just i'm uh, just picking on what uh baba just said about him not quoting oh, the bible. Let, let, let me human, please Okay. Let, let, because of what uh, John has just said, let me make one, one or two statements on that on what John has, John has just said. That but but he he picked he picked pick the first John chapter five. Are you with me? You yeah. see, the first John chapter chapter five verse seven was not the basis of the so-called inspiration that got to him. He was using first John chapter five verse seven as the explanation. Even even though even though it is a, it is an explanation that is out of context. Of this, yes. He, he was appealing to first John chapter five verse seven and to say, well, you know, you know, you know, I said, uh, you know, I said, I didn't get it out of study, and. Well, and and you, you can simply be worshipping God. Yeah, you can simply be worshipping God. Yeah. Because because there's water, there's blood, and there's spirit. So it was the spirit that was operating on. And that was where I caught the thing from. Which actually, which actually again, is not what we have in First John chapter 5 verse 7. The First John chapter 5 verse 7 is purely about the Lord Jesus Christ. Not not about any false spirits. Not about any false spirits. 
operating on uh, Dunsin. Dunsin is telling you that he is, he is getting a word from God. You can now bring First John chapter 5 verse 7 as, uh, uh, to explain it away. I, I know many people, people are still going to comment on that particular thing but uh, it's important because john it was important that john raised that because some people might say of a truth you say it's not about if they study elementary logic and i'm talking of secular logic it was not first john chapter 5 verse 7 that was the beginning of his discussion it, it was the end of his discussion it was the end of the talk so it is not saying that the, the thing came on his study of first John chapter 5 verse 7. It's just saying first John chapter 7, chapter 5 verse 7 was an example. So people mm -hmm. should, should get the difference between an example. They should get the difference between an example and a core, a core logic. Please, that's what I'm saying. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, so we will still come back to first John 5 7 and to say one or two things about that. But first, um and uh, delay you want to say something sir? yeah <clears throat> i just want to follow what my brothers said for any believer just search it from genesis to revelation it's about the word of god second timothy 2 15 we we know that uh, verse very well study to show yourself Approved unto God's study, not catch from uh, anywhere. Joshua 1 8. Don't let this book of law depart away from you. Psalm 19 it is the study of the word of God. Psalm 119, it is the study of the word of God. In uh, I think uh, Second Chronicles 36. It was when they found the word of God, everything that is in this. In fact, when Jesus was being tempted by the uh by the devil everything he said he said it is written so and the problem of uh people like uh don't say are just the problem of the uh, uh the scribe and the pharisees who twist the word of god to suit them that's exactly what he was doing and you will discover you see I don't know. I don't know why any any believer in this time cannot understand that catching anything from the spirit will be deceptive. I was uh, reading sometime um, First Kings chapter twenty-two. This is a thing that you need to really understand. First Kings chapter twenty-two when. The prophets were deceiving Ahab to go to war. So he, he, he needs to understand this. And those people were many. And they were confident that what they were getting from uh, uh, whatever spirit was speaking to them. Before they called the guy Micaiah or something. Who now, you know. But what I want to tell them is that you don't get anything which is extra biblical. That's exactly what they need to say. Anything that is said by Dika, the Spirit of God will. So talk less that the Spirit, wherever you get channel of your Spirit, I don't think that the, the Spirit has any channel. I think we have spoken about it before. So that's all I want to. I want just to back up what uh, my brother said to show, to say, uh, to tell him that the Word of God says study, study, and you. So you don't. Get from the spirit before you go and study. Study. Uh, if you say you get something from the scripture, we will go and look at the scripture. If you tell us that it's written this thing, we go and look at it. That's what you have said. But you are not getting this thing from somewhere before you start going and study it. So that is the evil that is in that. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Um so um, you said that uh, this, this quotation is based on twisting the scriptures. Where Peter said that those who twist the scriptures, um, they are untaught people. That's Second Peter chapter 3, verse 16. They are untaught people. They are ignorant and unstable people. 
we need to be stable to get what the word of God is saying. So any teacher that is quoting out of context, it's not come to read the word the place is saying and to bring out the true meaning of it. Who is using the Bible? That's what that's the part thing. To use the Bible. The Bible, the word of God is not a tool to be used. It's only a tool for God to change you, not you looking for your own proof, for your own bias, looking for a statement, a word or the other to, to deceive yourself and deceive people who are following you. He says that they twist it to their own. Uh, so this is just a warning for whoever uh, thinks that this person has an I iota of truth. It doesn't. Okay, uh, bro, Paul Larry, you want to? A lot has already been said, you know, I believe after everything that I wanted to say already been said. Um, the only thing is just that when somebody said he did not study, that on its own is a red flag. It should be a red flag to anybody because <clears throat> this is the thing. Uh, earlier on, I you know, I showed uh, that uh, Second Timothy from verse 14 all the way to 18. Uh, and the key uh, verse in there is that verse 15, where we are encouraged to study, to show ourselves approved. Let me see if I can, uh, you know, uh, project it again. For, for us to see. The key in there is, you know, is a uh, what does justice? You know, the key in there is that verse 15 that the diligence to present yourself as well, God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed. You know, the key is for us, you know, to study. How do you, how do you know whether what you have is the truth? How do you understand whether what is in your heart is the truth? Is by studying and making sure that whatever is it that you are doing or saying line up with the word of God. You can't. No, none of us, it doesn't matter the title anybody carries, has, you know, a different truth from what has already been revealed in the scripture. So when somebody is saying, you know, I, I do not study, the very first question that needs to be, are if you do not study, how do you know what you have is the truth. Jesus says something. He said, when the Spirit of God will come, he will remind us of the things he has taught. So how do you know what Jesus has taught if you don't study his word? So when somebody is not coming out and say, I did not study, you know, I receive it. Then I go and search the scripture. You've already laid yourself open to error because everything that God does is anchor on His Word. The Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was the God, and God Himself is the Word. So everything He does is anchor upon His Word, and He has given us that Word as the foundation of everything that we do, everything that we experience, everything that we see. Well, it's what we you know, to determine and to guide and protect our relationship with him. So the moment somebody come out and say, I did not study. Anybody who is concerned and who is focused on the word of God it should be a red flag. And the very next thing for you to do is probably maybe to pick up your Bible and run away from such a place. Because there are all kinds of spirits speaking to people these days. 
all kinds of spirits, or anything outside the Holy Spirit of the living God is from the enemy. Everyone has mentioned like most of the points that I wanted to raise. Um, but I would like to also talk about, I think I talked about it last week, and that's John 4.24, that the basis of our worshiping God, the basis of our doctrine, everything that we think, that we teach, everything that we know about God comes from the truth of the Bible. So we must, I think Jesus said, the Father is seeking for those who wants to worship and to worship God, it must be in truth and in spirit. Some people try to like separate the spirit and the truth. So they would say, okay, for example, when they say we're worshiping in spirit in many of these circles, they mean they are getting some kind of um, extra biblical revelation, or let's say they're falling down, that's spiritual worship. But like um, Brother Paul has said, um, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. So if there is any place, there is any gathering um, that is not dealing with the truth of the scripture and what the scripture has taught about Christ, about God, you cannot then say to the Holy Spirit because his name is the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit will not lead us into wrong teaching. The Holy Spirit will not lead us out of the scripture to give us extra biblical revelations that are not in line with what has been taught already. Another point that I would like to raise is him saying he has gotten some extra, um, so he didn't get his revelation from the from the Bible, he didn't get it from studying, it's basically telling us that, oh, you can't criticize me because if it's from the Bible, we could say, okay, you can't show us any evidence that you got this teaching from the Bible. So he, his, his argument is then, I got it from the Spirit. I have some kind of special revelation from the Spirit. So th therefore, no one can test. You can't test the Spirit. But scripture says, test the Spirit to see whether it's from God. And how do we test? We use the Bible. That's why the truth of the Word of God is the basis for all kinds of worship. Like I, I said last week as well, worship leads to singing. As you ask. So worship, for example, Job, for example, when you thank God, how, what, how do you thank God? You thank God for what he has done, for who he is. So your, your, your singing is as a result of what you know about God. So you can't, for example, an unbeliever singing a song might be moved by the lyrics, sorry, might be moved by the instrumentals and say it's the spirit, for example. But a true believer is moved by the lyrics of the song. So when you see, you read this, the text of a song and you see the song glorifying Christ, you see the song talking about salvation, you see the, tongue, the song exalting what Christ has done for us at the cross, that's what leads, you to, leads a person to singing. But in these circles, it's the music. So take away the music, take away the lights, take away the atmosphere, and it becomes empty they, they literally have nothing they can't they, they they wouldn't be in the spirit so it's about the, the, the it's it's about the atmosphere it's about the smoking system it's about the parts about the instrumentals tell them to switch on the lights in the church stop using the emotional kinds of music and just see whether you would still have the crowds one of the what one other statement well he made, as I said, he made quite a few statements, which I think we should, they need, we need to look at them very well. One of the other statements that I can see that he made was that he said that there are mysteries available for you. There are mysteries available In fact, for you. it's related to my next question, sir. I don't know if Please I go ahead, ahead, then. Okay, Please go ahead. So, um, from the book of Ephesians, Paul writing in the book of Ephesians chapter 3, verse 4. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 4. I want to like it. I don't know if you can see my screen. Yeah, yes. Okay, so it says that, uh, that by revelation, there was made known to me the mystery 
singular mystery. Paul had a mystery, as I wrote before in brief. So, um, and when we read more about this, he's talking about the mystery of Christ, as we can see in verse 4. Uh, the mystery of Christ that by reading, when you read, you can understand my insights into the mystery of Christ, not plural, the same mystery. So, Paul has a single mystery to, to deliver. So, um, my question is, uh, of course, mm -hmm. I know I know the answer, but I just want us to uh, to to talk about this. How dangerous is it for us to go ahead, just like Paul? I want to get my own mystery also. Paul got his own as a Christian, and he shared it with the people that uh, he was writing to. Can I also go ahead to get my mystery? Okay, um, or how dangerous will it be to be looking for my own mystery so that I can also have my own version of the mystery of Christ? There's something that, that question, if, if one is not careful, presupposes that Paul was the one going about fishing for his own mystery. Uh, so, and you yourself too, you, you too, you can go about fishing for your own. You, the, the, yeah, um, if you if you sing and sing and sing and possibly roll on the floor a thousand times, maybe ten thousand times, you have, and you you refuse to eat, you refuse to eat, you refuse to to drink water. You, you are going to receive mysteries. It's, the issue is not just that. Paul, all the mystery that Paul received, which Paul never applied for, and which we were never told, those mysteries came to Paul because Paul was in some so-called worship. Because worship to these people means you are singing repetitive songs. You are singing repetitive songs until you actually lose your appreciation of your surrounding basically and then and then the mysteries begin to appear to you in the, in the play that uh, that john mentioned that is a vision chapter 3 verse 4 paul was specific that the mystery was the mystery of christ the mystery of christ was the big mystery of the universe it's the, it's the only mystery, basically. It's, it's, the, it's the only mystery. That God was, was showing to Paul how his plans from eternity to save human beings had come to pass through Christ. That is a mystery. And it's a singular. All the message that Paul received was on God's original plan from eternity that his son was going to be the savior of humanity so as to have a species in heaven, a species that did not exist in heaven before that time, before Christ, basically. It is that mystery that God showed to Paul, not when Paul was doing worship, worship, quote and unquote. So if you now say that uh, uh, well, the little I was saying was not about that, the issue was not about the availability of the mysteries. The issue was about the source of the mystery. Um, for the Yoruba audience, let, let me say this that we say in our place. Uh, um, let me see if I can try to, 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 to break it down a little. This is the, this is the belief. This is the, and, and I believe, I hope, if the, if the real Yorubas hear that, they, they will understand what, 
what what I mean. Mm -hmm. the, who who is actually the inspirer of the mystery? The ministry is coming from who? From where? From who? This multiple multiplication of mysteries, according to him, because they are they are plural. This multiplication of mysteries, they are coming from who? From where? Is it from the God, from the God that in the, in the Revelation chapter 22, verse 18 to verse 19, said that if anybody has to the revelation he had given, he was going to add to the punishment that he was going to inflict on that person in eternity, is the ministry from that person. That is actually the issue that, as I said, Dunsio Yeka is deceived. Every one of these people is deceived. What makes matters worse is that they do not even know that they are deceived. They think the person that they are serving is the God of the Bible. It, it has not occurred to them that they do not even know him. So they can talk of miseries. There are miseries available. I can tell him categorically that is correct. There are miseries available. The only issue is that they are, they are not being brought by the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. They are not from the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the, 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 the Lord Jesus Christ in John chapter 14, John chapter 15, John chapter 16, said that the Holy Spirit will only, will only talk about me. Mm. So if anybody is looking for mystery, and the mystery does not center on the Lord Jesus Christ, the same way Paul's mystery was centered on the Lord Jesus Christ, that the mystery is not about Christ. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not from, God, from God. It's not from the author of this book. If anybody is getting any mystery, the mystery of, of uh, the channel of my spirit, <laughs> which is an occult thing, to come against us. It is about the person singing, my spirit, channel my own spirit. It's about the person, not about Christ, not about God. And they call that worship. Who are they worshiping? Oh. Themselves. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. <laughs> uh, I, I, I just I just need to ask this. Uh, because he has said this, and I believe that he has picked it up from most of these uh, uh pastors as well, who will say something happened and I I I sought God. I asked I went on uh, on seven days prayer as look. That's exactly the same thing. That's you see, they they they, they are employing the same thing. Uh, they don't understand that that's not the way God works. God works in His own ways, and He give revelation to those to whom He wants to give those revelation to. Not those, not those ones seeking the revelation, and not those things, not those ones. So. Uh, 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 mm. It's a general thing. It's general. That's why you see people standing there on the pulpit and say, hey, "Thank you, Lord." You know, as if some they are getting some revelation and mystery. And when they speak, they don't even know what to say. They say, "Oh, do you get this mystery?" I think he said it as well to show that he was the one that was getting some mystery. So, uh, do you get that? That's the same way they do it. There's nothing that they are getting. They are not even actually getting this thing from uh, the owner of the uh, uh, the owner of the universe. They are getting it from themselves. Just as uh, uh, John has said, the thing is just to uh, edify themselves, not about Christ, not about anything. Thank you, uh, brother. Brother Ugo, I, are you raising your hand since you want to say? No, no, no. The, the one that he has raised before. He didn't put it down. No, no, no. no. He, he just posted uh, some material, which I think you should read out. Okay. It's not okay. for our private consumption. Actually, it was my hand. 
earlier, but um, yes, I, I was just thinking, like I hardly hear with the new Nigerian songs, you hardly hear anything about Christ, the gospel. It's just like it's things they learn from Sunday school. So they, if you would ask, no. ask a, 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 an average Nigerian what, what, what the meaning of the gospel is, what salvation is, they wouldn't be able to explain it because many of them actually don't know it. So you can see it manifest in the songs that they write, that the songs that they write are very self-centered, thinking that God, God exists for them, basically. God exists for their glory. Um, even the prayers, the prayer point is all about me, all about the songs, all about me, what I'm going through. You would never hear a proper presentation of the gospel, proper presentation of Christ, proper presentation of our our fallenness on our, our our inability to 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 meet the the law and the requirement of God's law. I, I think a lot has been said on this, but. There's something you know. I, you, I just would like to kind of, uh, and and there are just two things. Two things, because we need to ask ourselves: Why is it that these people are always coming up with this idea that uh, you know there's always something else outside of the Bible? And the you know the, the reason for that is that it put them in a class. It put them in a class that set them set them above, you know the the so-called uh, uh, general congregation in the church. When you come out to declare and say, okay, you are receiving something that others don't have. And they cannot even support. They cannot even find in the face, you know, in the, you know, in the in the scripture. They said they set apart as this pressure, and that's 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 the reason because the idea of this whole thing is to draw men after themselves. Nigerian church is not just Nigerian churches, you know, the, the, the so-called church today, the institutional churches have set up a structure of lies, you know, and deception that have become so prime in our in our time today for anybody to just up and begin to use to draw men to follow them and not to follow Christ. It's all about self. And two things I'm going to say, you know, is that people should understand that God have no any special people or individual outside everyone that is called to follow Christ. The same calling, the same salvation, the same revelation found in the Bible that is available to a 12-year-old who will come to Christ today, or to a 10-year-old, is that same revelation and salvation, you know, and understanding that is available to somebody who claims to have been a Christian for 50 years. There's not, there's no any special revelation again. Every revelation that God wants to give unto us has already been, you know, been put in his Bible. So if anybody comes out and begins to say, okay, I receive something that is not in the scripture, understand the fact that he did not receive it from God. And the second thing is that people should understand there is no any special people. The idea that because somebody uh, uh, is receiving something uh, 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 something else, the idea that because somebody I have 
I have certain revelation that is not readily available, make me special. No, there's nothing like that. Second Peter chapter chapter one, you know, from verse 19 there downward, make this very clear. That the scripture, there's no prophecy of the scripture that is for any private interpretation. When he quoted that scripture that I was talking about, the water and the blood, he was using even something that was meant for Jesus Christ for his own private interpretation. You don't do that. No true believer, we so disparage, you know, the word of God, we so dishonor God, we so become so scornful, you know, is the highest level, you know, of, of disobedience and lack of respect for the word of God for you now to take a scripture that is meant even for the Lord Jesus Christ himself and begin now to attribute it to yourself. That's the spirit of Antichrist. So people should know what is at, at, play, at, at play here. When somebody takes a scripture and begin to quote it out of context for his own benefit to draw people after himself, understand the fact that he is doing the work of the devil. Because the Bible made it very clear that even the angel of Satan, I mean the minister of Satan, have disguised themselves as angel of light. People should wake up. We are talking about eternity here. No pastor died for anybody. No general advice. I know any minister. Mm -hmm. I don't care the title you carry. The same salvation, the same understanding, the same revelation that is available on the face of the, you know, in the Bible for each and every individual is available you know is available to you if you go outside of that then you are doing something that is totally contrary you know to jesus christ and to his holy spirit so there's no special people there's no special revelation god can constantly continue to give us understanding of his word but to say now there's something else new there's something that has not been revealed in the bible you know that God is now revealing to some special people in our own time now. It's a lie. And that's the reason why all this issue of people drinking tea with, uh, you know, with, uh, with Jeremiah and uh, Isaiah and being visited, you know, by Samuel and, uh, you know, all, all the old, old, old Testament prophets are coming up. Because they want to put themselves in that special class. Oh, I have a special connection to God that you people don't have. So because of that, you need to respect me. No. The bishop is a brother in body of Christ. Irrespective, the pastor is, a, is still a brother in the body of Christ. We are all called our children. God, don't have, God doesn't have men. We, have, we are called children of God. So people should stop all these things and just go into the scripture. Study the word of God. Understand what God expects from you. Yeah, you can need clarity from people who are seasoned, you know, in their faith. You may need, you know, guidance from people who are seasoned in the faith, you know, to help you walk so that you don't fall into error. But that doesn't make them special. It doesn't make them special. The same way God loves you and look at you is the same way he look at the so-called bishop or general adversary that you think has not become, you know, your God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And um, um, just something from this discussion. Um, spiritual truth is from the Bible. And any truth that anybody gets should be judged by the things that are already written. And then um, these people glorify themselves, they do not glorify Christ. And that, please, uh, our listeners, you should listen very dearly. Whoever you're listening to, who is he elevating? Himself, Christ Jesus. 
is discovery of what Christ has revealed. It's very important. And uh, Pro, uh, Bro, Bro Paul Eri used uh, gave a statement about the truth of the scripture that are already revealed. When we look at the book of um, um, uh, Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter one, Hebrews chapter one verse one, he says that uh, God, after He spoke long ago to our fathers in the uh, prophets, in many portions and many ways. In this last day, has spoken to us uh, by his son or th through his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things. But chapter 2, verse 1, I give something very important. Chapter 2, verse 1 of the same Hebrew. Remember that this book is not divided by uh, into chapter. This is not something that is written later in another day. It's still the same thought. And I said, for this reason, after you have understood who Christ is, how he is more than and the angels and all that and how god has elevated him. he said for this reason we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard so that we do not drift away so that we do not drift away if you think the things that are revealed in the scriptures are not enough for you and you need more mysteries you don't pay much closer attention to what has already been written. You are looking for something else. You are looking for extra biblical uh, um, revelation. You will drift away. It's like a, a boat on a seashore. You know, seashore always moves. There's this wave that always moves at the, at the seashore. If your anchor is not tied around that unmovable solid rock of Christ, if you are not clinged onto the Jesus of the Bible, you will drift away. And that's the analysis that this Hebrew writer is bringing up. When we pay closer attention to what is written, our first John chapter 4, talking about um, uh, the spirit of Antichrist, spirit uh, that we should test all spirit and the like. Testing all spirit, how do we test them? By what is already made available. If there is anything outside the scriptures, a channel of your spirit and all these things that they are singing about. Yes, it will catch attention. It will catch emotion. If it is not something that is clearly written in the word of God, forget it. It is an antichrist. It does not confess Jesus that he has already come in the flesh and has revealed himself. We don't need another mystical Jesus. Jesus has already revealed himself. Jesus has come in the flesh and he has revealed himself. And what we know about this Jesus Christ is sufficient, is enough. Any spirit that is bringing extra things, extra biblical revelation that is bringing these things, they are not from Christ. They are sent by the devil to deceive you. So just like uh, Bro Paul would say, Bro Paul Eri said that what? That people should wake up. It's a very important thing. Wake up. Please wake up and the Lord help you. Yes, I I want to I want us to look at uh, briefly. This is in support of the state the, the, the last few statements. It's just to bring the Bible out. The first John chapter five that he alluded to. I, I, please project it first so that we read. Everybody will read. We read it. We read it together. The first John chapter John five. Chapter five. Oh, yes, okay. from verse 6. This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit who bears witness, because the spirit is truth. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as one. Okay. Now, what, uh, what I want people to note, which is very, very plain, if, if you are just reading this. This is he who came by water and blood. Who is that person that came by water and blood? <laughs> the Bible did not leave us hanging. He named the Bible named him Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. 
So this is he who came by water and blood. He was pronoun at the beginning. And the Bible said Jesus Christ, who came by water and blood. Not only by water, but by water and blood. In order to remove Jesus Christ physically from that tree, the Bible brought in the Spirit. And the Spirit is capital letter S, which, which means that the Bible is talking about the Spirit of God. And it is the Spirit who bears witness. What, what, what witness does the Spirit bear? What, what witness does the Spirit bear? According to the Bible, the Spirit bears witness about Jesus Christ. Because the Spirit is truth. In fact, seven, you have the situation in heaven today. There are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. The Bible said these three are one. On the earth, you have the Spirit who has substituted, who has been substituted for Christ physically. The Spirit has been substituted for Christ. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. Because Christ has been physically removed from the earth. He's now in heaven. But the mm -hmm. Spirit is here. So, just as we were saying, just as everybody had been saying, first John chapter 5, verse 6 to verse 8, maybe even to verse 9, is to reemphasize that when we are talking of the centrality of the person at, on, on issue, it is Christ. Everything is about Christ. It is Christ. It is not, uh, it is, and the spirit that we are talking about is not just any spirit, the spirit of, of God that bears witness to the truth. And the truth is about Christ. So the, this spirit does not come to help anybody to worship. Please, mind, mind, mind my language. I'm using Dunzio Yekan's definition of worship. worship. Worship means that you, you roll on the floor. You sing, you sing, you sing, but you lose your senses. And that, that is the meaning of worship. No. The, the, the spirit, this particular spirit, which is the spirit of the Almighty, reminds people of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, sir. Uh, I, I think, you know, uh, let me just quickly chip this in before we go. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, the Adam said something that really hit home with me. You know, it's something you know that I've observed. We are living in an age and a time when people have made, you know, uh, uh, Christianity and the death of Jesus Christ about their own self and their needs. The central and primary purpose of Christ coming, death, and resurrection is for our eternal salvation. Mm -hmm. Every other thing that is you, that we can that we we get as a result of that is an attachment. It shouldn't become the primary focus. Even in the course of me coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, I I. I receive physical healing is another blessing. If in the course of my coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord decided to prosper me financially and materially, is another blessing. All these other things are not the they shouldn't be the primary focus. And that's why I mean when I say maybe about you know our life in this realm. If, if salvation is about, about is, is about our life in this dream, Lazarus should not be in heaven. Lazarus was the poorest man that the Bible ever talked about. And Jesus said he was he was in paradise with Abraham. But the rich man was in a place of suffering, you know, and an eternal death. If this thing doesn't 
the greatest miracle, the greatest miracle God has given unto man is eternal salvation. If you have that, you have everything. So people should stop making it about here and now. Understand the fact that there's a terminal point to everything we are doing on this earthly realm. But there's a place that we are going where we will be forever. And the decision we make today, the decision I make today, determines that whether I be a place of eternal rest and being with the Lord, or will be a place of eternal suffering and being separated from God. When people understand that, understand what is at stake, why platforms like these are daily shouting and yelling, and we are get people are getting blue in the face to say, wrong, Jesus, you know, the Bible says, that separate, wrong. We should understand that, and then we should flee from all these places that offers nothing but self-serving gospel of mammon that will lead to hell.